okay guys uh welcome back to intro to html and css it's good to have your back um from the last episode um i was trying to find out why emmet wasn't showing up in the extension store as i said earlier emmet is built into visual studio code now so there is no need to install an extension i thought the extension would have shown up there but it didn't so here is a page showing that emmet is pre-installed in visual studio code so it gets out of the box support for cool features like this as you can see here you should check it out it's really awesome okay so back to our web page uh the web page we had before we're going to be adding more content now an image and we're going to be styling it with html um sorry css my bad we're going to be styling with css so you're going to see the different ways of styling an element on the web page and how the web page will look when you apply a specific style rule to an element all right let's go into our editor okay um i'm starting to realize that i didn't explain the function of this body tag here um sorry my apologies this body tag is where we write our own html the HTML that will be displayed in the browser so everything within this opening and closing body tag is what is going to be rendered in our browsers my apologies for not explaining that earlier so um, let's dive in well we're going to be needing an image and let's go to the browser first um, let's go to on splash I'm here at on splash.com it's a site for photos different categories of photos and they are all free to use as long as you credit the photographer I think and let's look for a suitable image to use oh I like mountains let's see uh, let's use this so there are two ways of using images um, in HTML is either you use the direct link to the image or you download the file and host it locally together with your other files I'm going to be using the direct link to the image because it's quite faster and there might not be time to download the image and set it up but I'll show you guys later or you can google that now I'll, I'll, I'll give the other example too I'll give the other example so an image tag um, is IMG and it it has two attributes attributes are extra parameters you use within a tags um, angle bracket to specify um, other properties that the HTML tag needs like this SRC attribute now this is specifying the source of the image or where HTML your browser will locate the image so here we're going to be pasting the direct link to that image on, on splash and this alt attribute now is basically a text we're going to put in a text in here and what this does is that if your image is missing if it doesn't show up on the page this the text in the alt tag will show up instead so people know what the image is about even though it's missing and screen readers can be able to read the image the content of the image allowed to for people who use screen readers and so the alt tag and the alt tag should be descriptive of the image and this is this looks like this is not a mountain I should call it a canyon yeah a canyon so a canyon in the desert so we're going to be saying a desert canyon 
hope I'm correct and should check our page now and so you see this is the use of that alt tag this displays an alternative text should our image be missing so I have no idea why the image is missing now let me see okay 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 I think this is a link to the page instead of the image itself this is a link to the page instead of yeah this is a link to the page instead of the image itself. I guess we'll just have to download the image okay so yeah we've downloaded the image and it's going to be located so um, I've added the image in the same folder as our HTML file as you can see here in my text editor and we're going to include that here now in our SRC tag actually name of this image is too long so we might have to rename it rename yeah so this is desert yeah typo the jpeg okay so there are different ways to locate an asset or an image in html we can use the absolute um, path or the relative path and by absolute i mean if the image was actually not located in the same folder or in the same directory at all as our html file maybe on a website for instance like the way i wanted to do it at first that is an absolute path to the image because it's not anywhere in the same directory as our html tag so that is an absolute path an absolute path can also be within your system too maybe it's located in another different folders and you have to start navigating from your c drive or your root folder on your pc to get to that image so this image here is present relatively in the same um directory as the html so all we have to do is to specify that it is in the same folder and this is it here so these two characters here this dot here specifying that we should start from this present folder and check so as you can see now as i added this slash tag the image appeared here that showing that that is showing that we have the image present in our folder and when we check our web page now we should see our image now a very 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 large canyon image so large so what we're going to be doing now we're going to be using css to style all this all of this we're going to be using css to style it okay um There are various ways to style an element in HTML. There is the internal styling, internal styling, inline styling, and external styling. And I'm going to be showing you an example of all three. So, um, an internal styling pattern. An internal styling pattern is where you write your CSS directly, where you write your CSS directly in the head tag here this tag in between these two tags here so you write your css like this by specifying another tag called style you write your css in here where you can see um body and then specifying that the background of the body is white this is hexadecimal code for white color um wait why okay the body is already white so we don't have to change it to something that already is present on the page let's change it to a shade of red and we should see the body wow that is a really 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 huge image okay as you can see here the background of the body is red 
so let's reduce our image a little bit uh so we say image img img and we specify the width of the image to be just 200 pixels that should be small enough and then yeah this we can reset our browser now set the zoom of the browser as you can see now so the image is only 200 pixels wide and our page has a background color of red and so there are different ways to target an element in html i think there are about there are there are more than five ways to target an html element but the three major ways is by um specifying the main tag of the element like this so the css selector should match the name of the tag of the html element or we can use a class attribute now remember what i said attribute is attributes are extra parameters given to an element to carry extra detail that we can use to modify that element in in my own words but let me google what an attribute is for you to see html attribute 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 no attribute in all right so, so um okay see html attributes provide additional information about html element quite similar to what i say so see html links are defined with the a tag also called anchor tag a tag for short um the link addresses is specified with the href attribute now so this href attribute now is specifying where the link is pointing to so if i click this try it yourself you should see that this is a link which is the text displayed in here and this link this right here the value of this href attribute is where the link is pointing to so if i click this it's going to lead me to the w3 schools website in this window here so back to our uh, page back to our page yes so this looks very ugly so we might need to change it a bit okay as i was saying here the class now we can set a class of head heading text heading dash text and how we are going to style this in HTML is by um, doing this dot heading dash text. Remember, the selectors have to match what you specified in the HTML element, as you can see here. So, for selecting classes, you use the dot um, character here, the full stop character or the dot character if you will to specify that you are selecting an element by its class so the classes here here and here have to match and we can say the font size because it's a text element the font size um should be 200 pixels that's going to be really really huge and you can see here so maybe we could bring it down a bit and to 70 70 here and we can change you can actually change the font family if you don't like the font a web page has you can say the font family font family should be um let us say arial 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 and if arial is not present you can use any other sans serif so this here is specifying that the browser should check for Arial font family first and if Arial does not exist, it should load any other font that belongs to the sans serif category in your browser. So uh, as you can see now, our font has changed. Wow, HTML is font. 
okay now um the third major way to select an html element for styling is by using the id attribute and an id attribute is specified with the hashtag symbol and there can only be one of those in uh, in a html page not the entire page but one of those id like the name of the element the id you specified they cannot be two ids as they can be with class so with a class different elements can have a class of heading text as you can see so we set a class of heading dash text here so what will happen is that both these elements will be sharing styling because they both have the class of a class of heading text as you can see here so uh, okay this is it so you see now the font of this has been increased to 70 pixels so we can take this out we don't need our text to be big here and uh, an id can only have one one matching well not matching per se but for every id you specify to an element there can only be one of those values so let me see let me show you what i'm talking about so id um first paragraph so you see this this is an html paragraph element with an id of first paragraph so what i'm talking about is that we can't come here and assign this other paragraph element an id of first paragraph it's a it's a bad practice so ids have to be unique to that specific element alone so um we can select this first paragraph by doing this first paragraph and then specifying the color of the font to be white there are many ways to specify color not many actually um, i think four four ways to specify colors in css you can use the literal name of the color hexadecimal way there is hsl and there is rgb and rgba too um you can make a little research on that on how did on, on different ways that html colors or css colors can be specified so you can see now our text has become white here so this is one way to style an element in html another way is to this is called the internal styling method so let me use the external styling method now where um, i'll create another file called style dot css and i'll be going into this file in the next episode um, thank you very much for staying till this long i know the lectures can be boring but it's quite entertaining when you know that you're learning a lot and you can do cool things with html okay see you guys next time